Hey friends, in this video I wanted to show you how I use my Notion flashcard template to actually make my flashcards. So I thought it would be good to give you a bit of a demonstration of what I generally do when I'm revising, how I make those flashcards, what I make them from. That Notion flashcard video has got a bit of a ridiculous amount of attention online so far. Uh, I'm incredibly grateful for anyone who's watched it. Let's jump straight into my Notion and we're going to show you what I will do to set up and how I would start revising. Let's have a quick look at preeclampsia, one of the most common conditions to come up in an exam because it's such an emergency. And we can have a look at these, say, high risk factors, for example. So I can make a flashcard, let's copy this. We come into my dashboard, we can go into today's flashcards, and this is where all of my flashcards are. So here we have a new flashcard. We're gonna call this, and I like to have my answers in a toggle. And what that means is, if the text is slightly too long, or misspelt, then what I can do is I can click on it, but the answer is hidden away. So this is level one, I haven't got this right yet, and I created it today, which means the next time I need to do it is today. So here we go, risk factors for preeclampsia, the answer, hypertensive disease in previous pregnancy, CKD, an autoimmune disease, diabetic, or someone with chronic hypertension. So that's the first way I might decide to make my flashcards. So here you can see I've got two things tiled here. On the left, I've got Past Medicine. Past Medicine is just the website that I choose to use. It's where I get my medical school questions from. Other question banks are available. And on the right here, we have my Notion dashboard. And today I'm going to be practicing pediatrics, psychiatry, and women's health. Now, women's health is obstetrics and gynecology. So we're going to start the questions. And here we go. So we're not going to do all 160. We'll probably do one or two, depending on how many I get right. So we have a 39 year old woman who was diagnosed with breast cancer one month ago who is currently awaiting a local, a wide local excision. She's commencing a new relationship and requests your advice regarding contraception. So I know straight away this woman has breast cancer. So she should not be receiving uh, hormonal contraception, particularly estrogen. Or she's a smoker, doesn't have any migraines, no history of venous thromboembolism, BMI is within the normal range. So what is the most appropriate contraception option? So I would probably say it might be the copper into each run device because that's the one that uses no hormones. There we go. So I was actually slightly wrong there. I thought it was estrogen that you had to be particularly careful of. It's progesterone and that's something I need to remember. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go over again to women's health because that's a women's health topic and we're going to make a new flashcard. Now if you press the new flashcard template it should come up with a little toggle at the bottom and what I need to remember is that current breast cancer is a contraindication for injectable progesterone contraceptives. Great. Now, because I got that question right, what I'm going to do is, is a little bit cheeky. Um, I'm going to say that I got that wrong today, but I'm going to put it on like a level three. I already got that question right today. I was fairly sure about it. So I don't really think I need to have a look at this topic again for another few days. So I'm just going to set that to level three and it's not due today. Let's try another one. 16 year old female presents to her GP with period pain that is affecting her quality of life. She started having periods three years ago, that's normal, okay, and says that they've always been painful, so that's not great. But now she's become bothered by the pain. She's noticed that the pain always starts a few hours after the bleeding starts. Upon questioning, the GP finds out that she has a regular cycle of 28 days, that's the, the average cycle, and does not suffer from heavy periods, and there is no intermenstrual bleeding, so that's good. She's not sexually active. What is the best management for this patient? Now, I'm not entirely sure about this one because generally these questions just suggest some kind of analgesia, uh, you know, a painkiller. And often one of the answers might be something like some ibuprofen. And that might be the first thing that the GP would suggest doing, which, you know, in a real world scenario, if you said to someone who was in a lot of pain, have you tried taking some painkillers? They'd probably say, yes, I tried taking some painkillers first. That's why I'm now here. You wouldn't prescribe codeine. Codeine is uh, quite an addictive drug. Uh, it also causes all of its own problems, like a huge amount of constipation, that sort of thing. This person doesn't necessarily need to be on some kind of hormonal contraceptive right now. They're seven, they're 16, not currently sexually active. Into uterine system um, and you should find device. Again, those are both contraceptives. So I'm gonna go with mephanemic acid. Mephanemic acid is another type of NSAID, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Uh, of which ibuprofen is 
one of them. And so you would use that as the first line treatment for primary dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea, anything with dys means painful. Menorrhea is menstruation. So painful periods. So someone with a painful period, the first thing you'd say is, have you tried an NSAID? That is a good piece of information to learn. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go over, and again, it's women's health because this is contraception which falls within women's health. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new flashcard. We're going to say, okay, what is the first line treatment in primary dysmenorrhea? And our answer, of course, and now we know, is NSAIDs, such as methanemic acid. I'm really bad at pronouncing drugs. You could probably tell that I kind of reached that answer by ruling out everything else. I wasn't entirely sure that methanamic acid was an NSAID. I knew it should be an NSAID. I wasn't sure that was. But I knew it wasn't any of the other four answers. So really, I didn't actually know the answer to that question. What this flashcard does, rather than uh, answer recognition or active recognition that a uh, multiple choice question is, because you know that the answer is one of the options, so all you're doing is recognizing the right answer, these flashcards are active recall. The answer is not there and I need to get the answer out of my brain based on the question. So it, it's working two different things. The, this question on the left here is working my ability to understand this type of question. It's, you know, find out what they want from the question. But it's also working out how I can kind of deduce an answer that I don't necessarily know. Whereas the question on the right is flashcard. What is the first line treatment for primary dysmenorrhea? That is just a fact. And that is something I just need to be able to recall. Now there's one more way that I like to make my flashcards and to do that we're just going to say goodbye past medicine and we're going to come over here. Now the last way I like to make my flashcards is, is probably the, kind of the ideal way and that is going through my own notes. So here we have my kind of fourth year block and currently I am on EMCC. So EMCC is emergency medicine and critical care and we had a tutorial the other day which was recapping ECGs. I hadn't really had to interpret an ECG for a while and when we first went into A&E um, on Thursday last week I got handed an ECG and was looking at it and I was like oh I know this is normal but I couldn't tell you why this is normal and there are a whole ton of things that you can diagnose from an ECG if you just have a look at these notes there's a ridiculous amount that you can diagnose just from an ECG and I think I need to make some flashcards about ECGs and what is normal, what's abnormal. So for example, I'm going to take this whole section and we're going to move down from notes into flashcards. So this is the same flashcard template. This is just for space repetition flashcards. This is going to be for um, EMCC though. So this is obviously the first one I'm doing in EMCC. We've only started this block this week. I'm going to make a new flashcard. So what are the pathologies that can be diagnosed from the QRS complex of an ECG? So we're going to put in a little toggle here, which is going to have our answer. So I, I am going to leave all this information in because it's important to know what is normal. Normal is a QRS complex that lasts less than 120 milliseconds. Now, if you have a broad QRS complex, that can mean that you have a bundle branch block. And you know whether it's a left bundle or a right bundle, depending on the positivity or negativity of lead V1, which is the, one of the anterior leads. If you have a tall QRS complex in that you have a very positive R wave or a very negative R wave, depending how it is, what we can diagnose is either some hypertension, some aortic stenosis, or even pulmonary or pulmonary stenosis. So what we're looking at there is we're looking at how hard is the right ventricle or the left ventricle working. Uh, and I feel like I understand that pretty well. So even though I've made the card today, I'm not going to look at that for a week. I'm a bit loose with how I decide when I'm going to have to look at a card again. I feel fairly good about this, but in a week's time, I should come back and have a look at it again. So I'm going to leave that there. I am also going to make another flashcard because one thing that I'm really bad at remembering, particularly on ECGs, is what normal should look like. And again, I am pretty confident on that. So let's see that in three days. I always forget what the normal ranges are. I do wish that they printed them on the ECG. That would be very helpful. They don't. It's something that's quite easy in clinical medicine to look up, but it's something which could easily come up in the exam or the OSCE. They do love an interpretation of an ECG in the OSCE. If you'd like to see how I use my flashcards, we can do a little study with me session. Uh, and also, if you think it might be useful for you to have access to my flashcards that I've already made, I would be really happy to share those as well. I, I don't feel like I need to 
hide my own knowledge and hoard it for myself. I'm very happy to share my flashcards. So if you think it would be useful to have a look at what my flashcards are, let me know and I can upload them somewhere. I do hope you found this video useful. I know some people have been trying to use my flashcard method. I thought it might be great if you could have a look at how I use it, get a bit of an inspiration, maybe any medical students out there who are struggling with how to learn how to make their own materials you can kind of follow something similar. If you do want to have access to this flashcard template, maybe you haven't seen it before, check out this video where you can access the template. There'll be a link in the description as well.